Poco is a brawler that slowly gained burst damage over the years, due to an important distinction in the game that all supports had to share in order to function properly in the game. Let's take a look at how Poco exemplifies the need for supports to also deal damage. Poco was the first healer introduced into the game, in the premiere one. Pairing a healer with a tank was a strategy that originated from the infamous Poco Double Tank, or PDT comp, which still haunts experienced players to this day. It makes sense because Poco's the easiest brawler to pull this off with. Why is that, you may ask? Well, Poco's main attack is a widespread attack that deals minimal damage, but is easy to spam and hit. And since it's so easy to spam, he gets his super very frequently. His super is a wide cone, basically a bigger version of his main attack, that burst heals any teammates inside the area of effect. Note that I said minimal damage on the attack. He does deal very little damage compared to the rest of the cast with a single main attack now, but he dealt a lot less damage in the past. We're talking before second star powers here, where Poco's damage was a mere 980 per attack. This was 2,940 damage with 3 ammo. In a world where sharpshooters typically had 3,360 health at max level. In other words, pretty bad. Around this time, Poco hovered around the middle of the tier list as a good healer, but one that was overshadowed by Pam. All of that changed with his second star power, though. He received Screeching Solo, which allowed him to deal damage with his super, and this is where the balancing troubles with Poco began. Poco became a 1v1 monster, who could spam attacks and supers like it was nobody's business. Since his super went over walls and had an insanely long range, it functioned as a very good kill confirm. For a support brawler, mind you, that, coupled with his ability to burst heal for so much damage, made Poco a formidable threat and skyrocketed him all the way to the S tier. The star power was later nerfed, but the lesson had been learned. Giving supports too much damage in addition to their healing capabilities was overkill. C. Supports go against the inherent rule of Brawl focusing on individual interactions. Brawler kits are fashioned after the ability to duel with one other brawler, whether it's to fight, assassinate, or snipe them down. But supports throw this concept on its head. Rather than fighting a 1v1, it's much better for them to support a teammate through buffs and then 2v1 their opponent. This throws the concept of dueling on its head. To balance this out, Supports usually do not do the best in 1v1s, making that 2v1 their only option. This prevents them from being too flexible, while also giving them some counterplay, as you know they will be supporting a teammate, so you can position yourself to avoid that possibility. If you know a Poco is going down the right lane with the enemy bull, you can pick a tank counter to deal with the bull, while also picking a sharpshooter to separate and kill the Poco. But if the Poco had the option to 1v1, suddenly your whole plan went out the window, as suddenly the Poco is an actual threat when you separate them. This throws a wrench in your plans, and you now have to take extra care to defend against this strategy, while they didn't really have to do anything special. Anyway, Screeching Solo soon got nerfed from dealing 1200 damage to just 800, and he did have another star power that healed teammates when he attacked them, so that was also buffed in an effort to balance the choice between the two, from 500 health to 800. This shifted Poco to the other extreme, and he became the best burst healer in the game. This is when the aforementioned PDT combo began to rise. C. Since Poco could splash heal with his main attack and super, all the enemy had to do was pair Poco with two tanks. The two tanks would rush the enemy team and stay immortal because of Poco's heals, and they would body block damage meant for Poco, letting all of them stay alive. Poco could also heal himself with his super, letting him constantly attack. This was back during a time when the damage inflation in the game was not as rampant as it is now, and if you want to learn more about that, check out the Colt PowerPoint. This is the other extreme. Putting too much of Poco's power into his healing will make him a better support, that's obvious. He also still suffers from the same trade-off of bad 1v1 interactions. But giving him the best 2v1 interactions in the game made Poco an even more toxic brawler. The 2v1 was predictable, sure but what's the use of predicting it if you're never going to be able to take action on that prediction? This is where the concept of power budgeting comes in. Power budgeting is the act of allocating certain types of power to certain abilities, and it comes in various forms, such as the difference between main attack and superpower. We are specifically talking about the split between matchup spread and utility that all supports should have. C. 
Supports have this tricky balancing act because of the aforementioned flexibility. Since Brawl is a game in which characters must be self-sufficient, making brawlers that rely on the opposite of that need to have a certain balance between their attack power and utility power. On one hand, if their utility is too strong, their 2v1 interactions become near uncounterable, and if their attack is too strong, then they have too much flexibility between their 1v1 and 2v1 interactions. Supports must have more utility power than attack power, and the attack power must be low, in order to make that 2v1 scenario the best option and steer support players towards that support playstyle. But the attack power cannot be too low. I mentioned that Poco was basically a worse version of Pam before Screeching Solo dropped. This is because Pam actually had the ability to 1v1 as well as heal. Poco's healing was stronger, but this did not matter, because no matter what happens with their 2v1 interactions, they will always have to have interactions with enemies, and those interactions require 1v1 strength. Even if Poco is really good at supporting, he still won't be picked if he has too little damage, which is why after both of these balancing nightmares, Poco was buffed to the version he is today. Today, he has very good burst healing and very good burst damage. The healing is great enough to make 2v1 ING his best option, and the damage is bad enough to make Poco's 1v1 matchups hard, but the damage is good enough to not make them impossible. This is the ideal Poco, and this is why supports need damage. Thanks for watching. Watch this video, or this playlist, or join the Discord server.